Hey guys and girls, in today's video, we're going to talk about this Ruger Super Blackhawk 44 Remington Magnum. And this one's got a, a short, the shortest barrel that Ruger offers. We're gonna do plenty of shooting at some steel targets and at some otherwise. We're gonna talk about the journey that this guy has been on. And if you'll stick around to the end, some of you have asked, how do I deploy those X steel targets? And so I'll do a quick segment on that. So I hope you'll stick around. I think it's gonna be a fun video. Here it is, the Ruger Model 0814, 44 Remington Magnum Super Blackhawk. This guy has a four and five eighths inch barrel. And by the way, that number for a revolver always includes the barrel extension here, which goes through the frame almost to the face of the cylinder. And so that entire distance there is four and five eighths inches. Fairly short from my perspective, for a heavy recoiling revolver. But it has no flutes in the cylinder, which is characteristic of the Super Black Hawk. It weighs 45 ounces, is 10 and a half inches overall. It is a single action revolver. And if you'll remember, that refers to the function of the trigger. With a single action revolver, the trigger has a single function, and that is to release the sear. If this were a double action revolver, then I could release the sear like I just did, and I could also pull the trigger, cocking the hammer at the same time by the trigger pull, and then the trigger pull would have a double function, and it would be a double action revolver. Nice fit and finish. Tight forward to back, tiny bit of play. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And a very nice trigger pull. And yes, it is available in California, at least as of this video. Well, I tell you what, I'm a fan. I started out skeptical about this short barrel, worried about the, um, about the amount of recoil, but it's not too bad. Now I am shooting hand loads, and these guys are uh, topped with some 100 XTP, 240 grain bullets. And whenever we can, we like to use premium brass from Starline. And so, uh, yeah, I, I like this. I like this package. I've been a seven and a half inch um, barrel single action um, fan since my son got his uh, Vaquero in 45 Colt. And, uh, and so I thought I had to have that long barrel both to be to put shots on steel, but also to, uh, to not to be too uncomfortable. But these are, these are certainly um, at the mid to upper end of, of uh, 44 Magnum power levels and so it's still fairly comfortable to shoot. Let's put some more shots on steel and uh, tell me what you think. Well, I think that was just kind of wet my whistle. Let's 
do that again. And I'm going to try to slow down just a hair and uh, reach out there and hit some of those longer range targets with this four and five eighths inch barrel. All I need to do is not flinch. All right, well, we're gonna do some more shooting because I have reactive targets um, in mind. And don't forget about that um, segment we're gonna do at the very end where I'm gonna show you how to deploy some X-Steel targets. But right now, let's talk about the uh, journey that this guy has been on. And uh, um, I actually had this revolver for quite some time and it came from Ruger. It's on loan from Ruger. And, uh, and when I got it, um, it didn't look like this. It had some, uh, it had a few things that I needed Ruger customer service to take a look at. And so uh, let me play this segment right here and uh, you'll be able to see what this gun looked like before today. But let me tell you what the issues were in order of what I would call importance. Number one, chambers of the cylinder are all chamfered, but the chamfer is off, off center. And then there is in shake. It's hard for me to measure because I don't have a complete feeler gauge set here, but it looks to be about seven thousandths of an inch in shake. And then lastly, the grip panels, beautiful as they are, they don't fit really well, as you can see. Pretty good reveal on the strap, but from a user perspective, these sharp edges right here are a problem, particularly on this side right here. The sharp edge, because it digs into your finger right there. And so when I try to grip this heavy recoiling short barrel revolver, that sharp edge right there really digs into my finger. And I can just imagine what it's gonna feel like under recoil of a full house 44 Magnum load. So kudos to Ruger customer service because they took care of all of the issues that I had raised. And um, that included the uh, end shake, which is now at uh, three thousandths of an inch down from seven thousandths. And, um, and they really did a great job on refitting. Um, I think they actually put some new grips on and then fit them better to the frame. And I was told in no uncertain terms that what they did for me is what they would do for any customer. And, um, and I, I just happened to believe them. And so let's see if we can bust some jugs, maybe pop a, water, a, a tomato can, we'll see.
So what's my take on the uh, Ruger Super Blackhawk 44 Magnum with the short barrel? And I got to tell you, I'm a fan. I, um, like I said earlier, I've always been thought that I, need, I needed the seven and a half inch barrel to be able to shoot well and shoot comfortably. But this guy here is, uh, this has been a lot of fun and a first time for me with a short barrel um, Magnum caliber revolver. So uh, yes, fantastic gun. And again, thanks to uh, Ruger customer service. They did a great job on this. Um, they brought this thing back from the ashes as I uh, hinted in one of my Instagram posts and um, great gun. Now let's take a look at that X steel target and see how easy they are to hang. I'll see you in the next video.